Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll see how far the number one and number two picks from last year's draft have progressed here in season number two. It's pick number two, Carson Wentz, and number one overall pick, Jared Goff. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person. Big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. Greg Zerline, the Rams kicker, approaches, kicks it off. And here we go from Los Angeles. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here come the Eagles. Last week, 31-3 over Chicago. See Carson Wentz and company. They're now 10-1, nine straight victories. And 10 and 1 for the first time since 2004, Charles. And that season culminated in a Super Bowl appearance against the New England Patriots. And the ninth straight win that ties the franchise record from 1960 and 2003. This team is just, they're racking up records each and every time out. Carson Wentz has been a marvel. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. The team is playing so well. And four straight wins, partner, by 23 or more points. This team is not just winning, they're doing it impressively. <laughs> Now a play fake here on first down. And no, incomplete. Boy, they took a shot there on the first play, trying to start it out with a bang. But it's second down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. The defense here for the Rams. I got a kick out of talking last year with Aaron Donald about how when he came out of college, many NFL teams thought he might be undersized to play defensive tackle. Instead, he's been a perennial all-pro, pro bowl player since day one, and offenses are still searching for ways to block him and keep him from disrupting their offense. So now an early third and 10 here on their opening drive. On play action, it's Wentz. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. A gain of 19 in picking up the first. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. And he's got Rome. And he's got this one just across midfield to the 49. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And some options here for the offense on second and two. Left, 
They run again with a Jai. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. This is Ajayi. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Second down following the run. Now they'll throw it. Wentz. It's complete. This is Brent Salad. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? First carry for LeGarrette Blunt. Down right around the 25. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. Second down, eight. Now a play fake. Wentz. And some room to roam now. Open space inside the 10. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the five-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. Jay Ajayi taking it in from four yards out. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. 
That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. Elliott now to kick this one away. So Jared Goff ready to bring out this Rams offensive victory last week for the Rams over the Saints. Now 8-3 for Los Angeles. Jared Goff threw for 354 yards and a pair of touchdowns in that victory. And this is a resilient young team proven to be very dangerous. You remember last week, they struggled up in Minnesota. Got beat 24 to seven in that game, but it was a seven, seven game in the fourth quarter. How about the way they got off the deck and came out ready to go? Goff, two touchdowns in the first half. That team was ready to roll, 354 yards total for him. On first and 10, Goff. And incomplete to open things up. Trying to get it to Woods. And it's second down. Speaking of Cooper Cup, he's coming off his first career 100-yard game against the Saints last week. And how about the way that he bounced back from their loss against Minnesota? Because Cooper Cup in that game had a chance for some really big plays. A big drop in the second half. Also made a nice catch and fumbled on the one-yard line against Minnesota on a play that would have put the Rams ahead. So everybody wonders, how's the rookie going to handle things? He shows how. Goes over 100 yards against the Saints, helps lead them to a big victory. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. And the defense now for the Eagles. I'm going to take a good, strong look at the veteran presence in the secondary that is Malcolm Jenkins. Starts at safety, plays cornerback when they go into their nickel sets. He can move inside and cover the slot receivers. He's also a guy who knows how to turn the football around when he picks it off. Three interceptions in 2016. Two of them return for touchdowns. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Goff now looking to throw. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive a lot. Third down conversion here's big. That's what they were aiming for. You want to keep moving the sticks, get into a rhythm, gain confidence as you go along. And right now, mission accomplished. On first down, it's Gurley. Room here to run. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. From the 50, it's gone. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's brought down.
First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby, and it's third and short. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Tavon Austin from 17 yards out. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments. Got to run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was all finished off by the 17-yard touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. Well, now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Three, 
Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll set him back five. Still first down. touchdowns now for him in the first quarter and I'm liking what I'm seeing from his big guys up front because they're winning the leverage game how many times we talk about low man wins right move the defensive front aside create those gaps and holes he's found his way through them for two touchdowns and after both of those touchdowns he went right up to that O-line and hit each of them on the helmet that's he recognized that's them. a smart man you know what else he should do if this continues take them all to dinner Elliott on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Elliott now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, Offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. They go play action with Gurley. Now Goff. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. He was looking for Todd Gurley. That'll bring up second down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong. He's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. Right side complete. That's Woods. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And yes, home is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. And probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining him on this stage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. 
second down following the run. Out of the gun. Gone. Throw left side complete to Cup. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it. Occasionally, you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now Goff on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second down now after the pass completion. Shotgun snap for gone. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Offense lining up first and ten. Play action. It's gone. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Cooper Cup was his intended target, and now it's second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Now gone. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard, and it's fourth. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together. They had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 53. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And before we can get to the field goal try, time will run out on this first quarter of play. 14-7 is the score. We're back to Southern California right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two as they'll take over with the ball first and ten.
So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. On first and 10, here's Wentz. Ertz over the middle. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. From midfield, here's Wentz. Smith catches left side. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense, exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. go nickel here defensively on third shotgun now for Wentz and he connects with Ertz and he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45 and eagle first down there Wentz to Ertz and the names that end in TZ and a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of them. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. out incomplete so he can't hang on and as I watch that unfold I remembered an expression that I've heard maybe from you I don't know but you're gonna get hit anyways might as well hold on to the ball all right you know a coach <laughs> said that right yeah. not an actual player not a chance at all way easier said than done <laughs> they run with a giant and they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. from the gun. Wentz. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. 
Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. And let's see six defensive backs out there. They're in the dime here on third and goal. From the gun, it's Wins. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And the kick by Elliott is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So they take it all the way to the one yard line, but in the end, they opt for three. I know if this was a video game, they never would have gone for the field goal because, Brandon, who kicks field goals in video games? But you've got to make sure you get points. And that was as easy a three as you can get. You kick field goals in video games. That's who kicks field goals in video games. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he powers his way up past the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Rams on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, here's Goff. They got him in, it's Woods. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It's a nine yard gain and it keeps the drive moving. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. here and he'll running right through it and he takes this one down all the way near the 30. a big run there 29 yards and a first well plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball he broke the tackle and gained the yardage but that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender is bad they're not going to make 100 percent of the tackles all the time even the best in the game will miss one occasionally the key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. 
On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. in this big time run big time pass a one two combination look pretty good how about that they, let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though now whistles and a flag down i think one of the rams linemen might have moved Foster, offense so this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still first down. This one down to about the 17. He'll get three of those penalty yards back here, leaving him with a second and 12. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Offense. So that one will be accepted. Still third down. The Rams on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 11. Here's gone. And that is incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Zerline's kick is good. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17-10. to 10. So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll begin the drive with a Jay. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Now Wentz throwing on second down. And yeah, this is Ertz with it, right side. That catch good for five. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Eagles on third down. They've been okay two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Now Wentz. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. An Eagle first down, Wentz to Ertz. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. here on first down. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Nelson Aguilar, 58 yards. And the Eagles add on to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Elliot now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. So that drive, four plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Elliott now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game, 
because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Well, with that incompletion, sneak in something that really kind of snuck in last week that went pretty quietly. Adrian Peterson ran for 79 yards, Charles. He passed Marcus Allen and Edron James, moved into 12th on the all-time rushing list. And now just three yards behind Marshall Falk for 11th. 36 behind Jim Brown for 10th, and the only active rusher with more yards than him, Frank, Frank Gore Moore. of the Indianapolis Colts. So you're talking about putting it together. Adrian Peterson finding a lot of fun in Arizona running the football. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. The Rams on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw. Goff. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. It's Johnny Hecker now, an all-pro three of the last four years, on to punt as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's Carson Wentz now with the rest of his offensive unit heading onto the field. He's been in a pretty good groove. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? It really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game. Dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. Wentz now on first down. It's caught on the right side at Smith. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action.
Wentz to throw on second down. They set up the screen to Ajayi. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. On first down, Wentz. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So here we go, first and 10 now. wins. <laughs> Jeffrey with a catch left side. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So the offense has it first and 10. Into the red zone, Wentz. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. They go play action here on first down. Got him in. Open. It's Ertz. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Zach Ertz in the final seconds of the first half. And the Eagles had six to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Elliott on for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. Elliott now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line.
And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we send you cross-country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report, here's Larry Ridley. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Rams are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Eagles will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Eagles with their opening drive. Wentz is on target here, and he'll be tackled at their own 44-yard line. Later on the drive, they'll run it here with Jay Ajayi, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Down to late in the first, Austin's going to look for space, and he cap off the 10-play drive with a TD, as that'll tie the score at 7 all. Eagles with the ball, end of the first. Ajaye is able to get clear of the defense, and he's gone as he sprints to the end zone. Now first and 10, that puts them up by a touchdown. Aguilar is by himself here, and this four-play drive goes for a touchdown as they take a 14-10 lead. Eagles with the football, final seconds of the half. Wentz going to find his safety blanket, tight end Zach Ertz, and he counts off the six-play drive with the score. As they open up the lead to 21 10. All right, Larry, indeed a one sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now Goff on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. From the gun on third down, golf. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Timmy Jernigan in there to get him for a loss of three, and it'll be fourth down. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Johnny Hacker now. 
as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field, and he's been effective in their winning, so it makes it a little easier to put a montage together. It really does, doesn't it? Because we can see him throwing it really well, but how about everything else that's going on? Protection has been excellent, and of course the guys catching the ball have provided some highlight reels themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's not always just one man. He's been good, but you got the guys catching the ball, too. Yeah, you name it. It's all coming together for them. What they call that synergy? Everything working together really well. And right now, he's the focal point of it. Throwing on first is Wentz. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's going to be ripped down by the face mask at the end of this. And that's going to add 15 more onto the end of this thing. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground. And sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask. running back and able to push his way forward here for a good little game five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five partner i think from our experience together we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if i'm going to run the football on first down i've got to get at least four yards they got five here they've got to feel pretty good about that one On second down, here's Wentz. Completes it to Aguilar. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. That was a terrific job by the defense stopping them on third and short. But sometimes you get some visual cues from the offense because when they're going in short yard situations, you might see the offensive line come in tighter together, a little more shoulder to shoulder, trying to wedge a hole in the middle. They didn't get it done on that play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Elliott puts this one through. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. 
The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. second down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. And now here's a carry heading left. Trying to turn the corner, but he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. The Rams on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and five. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. down gone open man right side is cup complete and that play is blown up losing yardage back at the 35 
Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. From the gun, here's Goff. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? The Rams on third down, five out of nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Zerline's kick is good. And they get a little bit closer here as the lead's down to three touchdowns. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. He's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays, nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. They'll start out on the ground with a Jay. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. To throw, it's wins. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Now Wentz on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Donnie Jones now. 
And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. That's taken on the 25. Cooper fast with a feet. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Tough day. Tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. On first down, it's gone. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Now let's see who this is on. Defense. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's gonna fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Yeah, give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four.
The Rams on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. Here it's third and two. Hey, 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 hey. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Back to the air, Goff on second down. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game. And to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on. And they just play better and better. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Out of the gun, Goff. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. Desperation time for Goff on fourth. And it is incomplete. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Eagles defense able to hold. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Here's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the pick up there and a first. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Fresh set of downs here. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're gonna have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's gonna take to slow them down. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. Three, 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 
They fake the give. Now wins. Smith catches left side. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. And now a first down following that long gain. Now a handoff as they run left side. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Yeah, let me pump out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Working from the gun, Wentz. And some space here. He can't get him down. And he'll score. Touchdown, Eagles. Carson Wentz, 31 yards. And the Eagles add on to their lead. I know a lot of people look at these games and think, all right, this thing's done. Let's have some sportsmanship. Let's not try and score. You should never do that in the NFL. I've seen big leads blown, and teams that looked like they had a victory, all of a sudden were going home with a loss. Elliott now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And a long run there in the end to top it off. Elliott now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Goff on first down. They find some open field here. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Second down, here's Goff. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, 
Big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Now gone. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. down throw gone over the middle that's hauled in by cup and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49 a good pick up there eight yards on the first down completion and boy they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him didn't they they certainly did and obviously they liked his measurables otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team height weight speed all of that but how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. That time trying to find Gerald Everett, and it's third and short. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Two yards to go here on third down. Off throwing again. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Timmy Jernigan in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there they're already slim hopes are gonna ride on this one they'll go on fourth down gotta try it here he's back to throw and it's a short one here complete to his tight end but they're going to wrap him up as he'll go down well short of a first. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. A gutsy decision there at this stage in the second half in their own territory and a decision that they might regret. Can't wait for the postmortem. You know, this postgame press conference, because the questions are going to come fast and furious about this decision, no matter how the, how the game turns out, right? What were you thinking there? Why did you have a certain play call? Did, were you confident in your defense? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. going to keep coming up. Yeah, no matter the scoreboard, just tough to justify. way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense, it's really kind of geared to stop that play. Your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Now a handoff here to his running back. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. From the gun on third down, wins. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. 
It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from 53. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, it's not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. Complete, it'll be second down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. A shotgun snap for goal. And that is incomplete. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. You know, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's thing. true. got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football, and this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. Game 
Flag comes out, and that's because the offense did not get the playoff in time. And you can see the head coach, he is not happy. Everyone getting away from him right now because he's frustrated that they didn't get the ball snapped in time. Here we go on first and 15. And now here's a carry heading left. And some room to maneuver. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Going to give this time to the tailback. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. on third down three for seven so far in this game this is third and four here's Smallwood and that play is blown up losing yardage back at the 35 and a loss of three to bring up four so Brandon when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. Forty six on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. Now Goff on first down. Going right side here, and that's complete. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Goff now to throw. This is complete to Watkins on the slam. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. for a break back to finish it off on EA Sports after this
So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. And the offense lining up first and 10. to throw. Goff. He gets it to Gurley. Complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down. It will. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So here we go, first and 10 now. To the air again, golf. And an alley to run. Finds a seam inside the 40, and he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. They're gonna need to get up and set in a hurry. Now it's gone. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. From the red zone now, gone. And that is caught. And they're going to see this one at the end. They get a score, but pretty much an exercise in futility right now. Still down big. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Cut the lead back now to 21. That time, a six-play drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty slick return there as he's up just shy of the 45-yard line. Now that's the kind of return you're looking for. To get to that spot on the field, that allows you to do a lot of things on offense. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. They come into enemy territory, and I don't care what the matchup is in the National Football League, you're up like this late in the game on the road. This feels pretty good. Oh, it feels fantastic. Anytime you get a road victory in the NFL, that's a big-time accomplishment, and to do it this convincingly, that just tears up the script that every home team has, which is nobody comes into our house and pushes us around. They took care of business today. Yeah, they pushed around, and now the final stages of this one. Now a handoff here to his running back, and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. 
Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.